For thousands of years, mankind has looked to the bee for more than just nourishment. A medical approach using bees called apitherapy looks into how bee venom can treat disease and chronic illnesses such as MS and arthritis. Bees have been on this planet for more than 60 million years, while mankind has been on Earth for just two million of those years. What can we learn from the honeybee could be more than just sweetener for our tea. It could be the treatment for ailments that bees have provided from the very beginning. Ancient Greece. The history of early man using bees and their products can be traced back to 13,000 BC. At some point, around 3100 BC, humans began to domesticate bees and developed medicines and ointments. The most ancient personality related to apitherapy is Aristros. Regarded as the father of apitherapy and is one of the most enigmatic figures of ancient Greek religion, he is said to have passed his knowledge of beekeeping on to mortal man. Romania, the epicenter of early apiculture. We caught up with Dr. Stefan Stagacu, one of Romania's leading experts in apitherapy. Dr. Stagacu, Thank you so much for seeing us today. How's everything in Romania? Very, very good, nice. Uh, now it's uh, sunny, sun coming back. S spring is in the air and the bees are happy once again. Yes. Well, that's great. Um, can we start with apitherapy itself? What exactly is it? So apitherapy is not just bee venom therapy. It's the use of all beehive products to prevent diseases, to treat diseases, to recover from diseases both in humans and in animals. It's everything depends on the kind of patient and kind of disease. If the disease is something easy, very easy, not a problem like a wart, then you can do like injections or live bee stings in five sessions, the warts are going away. It's because they are caused by the viruses and the venom destroys these viruses, which are at the root of the wart. Okay, wow. uh, but if the disease is a, a long term disease like multiple sclerosis and you need to do the treatment like one, two, three years, four years sometime to allow the nervous system to regenerate. Now, from the practical point of view, I'm doing also this in Romania in my country. When the patient comes to me, I can do the injectable B venom. 10 sessions, 20 sessions, 30 sessions, but it's difficult for the patient to come to my place or to stay in a clinic nearby for um, longer than, let's say, one month. Because it's yes. expensive, if they are not in the family, it's not practical. So in this situation, what I'm doing, first of all, I'm starting with the injectable B-venom because I have everything under control. I'm a medical doctor. I can keep under control the possible adverse reactions. And when I see that everything is okay, the patient knows the treatment, uh, got already the, um, the, the product inside, then I start to teach them slowly, slowly to become a beekeeper. Like I'm telling them, look, on a long run, the best for you is to get your anti-allergy kit, like you go to the pharmacy, to your lo local medical doctor, and you ask for antihistaminic, you ask for cortisonics and for adrenaline, to have just in case you'll develop later an allergy, and then like a, like a, like an epi epi pen, right? And so I, I'm teaching them how to do bee stings. Okay, so they'll start bee stings, micro bee stings at the beginning, and they will buy. At the beginning, they just buy the bees. Uh, they order the bees. Like in United States, there are several companies which are shipping live bees to patients yes. with multiple sclerosis, arthritis, and so on. And then later on, they buy a few colonies in their yard, backyard, and then they have uh, practically in each beehive there are like thirty thousand syringes. <laughs> yeah. The syringes for them for the treatments so they become independent so you talked about 
chronic illness, but what about like injuries? Venom is very good, uh, also to allow the blood flow to, to be stronger and so on. So in the beginning, the first like first minutes, you you saw on the soccer uh, football matches, it yeah. comes uh, the doctor or the massages, the trainer, they come with a kelen, which is because one, once you get a trauma, uh, this trauma uh, creates a very big heat inside. Yes. So, because it's just a physical element, this pressure creates heat. Now they come with that kelen, which is freezing. It's very, very cold. Yes. To block this fire here, which is very good. But after this, when the match is ended, uh, because of the trauma, uh, the cells in there they are, are dead. They are destroyed. Then uh, the, the body must replace the cells, so it creates his an inflammation, that swelling redness and so on and so on the heat so yes. in this time uh, the kelen the cold is not doing anything so it can diminish the inflammation but it's not good it's better to to have a kind of soft anti-inflammation and here comes very well propolis so honey and propolis can keep under control the inflammation and after a couple of days then you can start with bee venom because bee venom around will help the blood flow and then uh, when it's better blood flow, then of course the regeneration is, is easier and it's faster. For years I've struggled with chronic knee pain. Would this be something that could help? I decided to investigate the treatment for myself and found an apotherapist on the central coast of California in San Luis Obispo. Right, so, so uh, we're gonna work on the, on the knee here today. So I'll, I, I guess okay. I'll just go ahead and uh, uh, I got the, the sweatpants that or easily Perfect. to pull. Is that good? Yeah. All right. Great. Okay. Now tell me where, uh, where it is. Uh, okay. So I have it on right. this side. Yeah. It, that 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 Maybe it kind of hurts. Yeah? yeah. Is that what that is? Yeah. Okay. So it's mainly on this side, and but I do have a little bit on that side too. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, I'll just go ahead and uh, throw a little ice on there. Is that a good idea? Sure. Is it or or is it? Wait, okay. All right. So now okay. she does die after this. Okay. I will tell you. Okay. That. No. Okay. So you we got it. Uh, yeah. Sure. Go ahead. All right. I'm gonna yeah. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, uh, well, are, are these bees. They, okay. I just want to be. Is this the right leg? Because <laughs> no, I, they have. Sometimes I have to remember. It's this leg, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 All right. All right. Okay. So yeah. That's fine. That's this is that's fine. Exactly where. So you feel that? Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, I got a little bit of that. Do you mind if I put her in here in the wa water? No, here? not at all. Okay. Not at all. Perfect. I, I, I can see the the uh, stinger. The stinger there. Yes. And it's uh, it's kind of pulsating. Yes. Is it? Uh, is there's is there supposed a venom to do that? sack. Do that? There's a venom sack that do comes that? out. Yeah. And it's attached to the stinger, uh -huh. and there's an actual little muscle in there that pumps the. How long uh, is that venom? supposed to stay in there? Well, uh, usually. 10, 15 minutes sometimes. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And, wow. But we can take it out early. No, no. It's... And uh, yeah. while we're waiting, I'll get another girl on the on the line here. Okay. Oh, well, okay. Uh, where did that, there was this, oh, hey, there he is. <laughs> well, sorry there, buddy. Let's get him back in there. Oh, her. <laughs> okay. You ready? So yeah, so I'm going to put another gonna one. You're going to do over another here. one on that side, right? All right. My my wife says I that I should put a little of this on there. Yeah. I don't know if that does anything, but okay. So uh, yeah, this is the right thing on there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and give that guy. A... There she goes. There she goes. Yeah. That's it. Sometimes they yeah. Have... Sometimes they have to think about letting it go. Really? <laughs> for a minute. Yeah. Well, that's incredible. Yeah. So when so that's when it. Lyme people first start, you mm -hmm. have to do testings, obviously, to find out if you're allergic and what the right. testing we put, we do it, and then take it right out. Okay. And watch for any kinds of anaphylaxis. Sure. And uh, if everybody's good to go, then we usually do one more sting, leave that in, and <clears throat> what happens is you ramp up 
from one sting all the way to 10. Okay. And people who are cro treating chronic illnesses like Lyme disease, MS, uh, they, they, the protocol calls for three times a week, uh -huh. like usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay. And you sting at least 10 times. And it's done on really? your, it's done on the spine, uh, on either side of the spine. Okay. Okay. Those are the meridian points the meridian. for the bladder actually that run along each side of the spine. Okay. So, uh, we, we can do it ourselves. That's why we have six inches, in, six inches tweezers. So you can actually do it yourself. And I've taught many people how to do it themselves. That is amazing. Yeah, you use a mirror and right. you sit in the bathroom and you know, you can just, well, or you can have somebody do it for you. It, it is an amazing feeling. Um, mm -hmm. I, 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 I can definitely feel uh, something happening, uh -huh. you know, I don't know if well, it's just- Well, there are also endorphins they, I don't that happen too because, yeah. uh, because of, of pain. Uh -huh. You normally have a, a breakthrough of endorphins when you have some pain involved. So. Okay. okay. But uh, the, the protocol goes for uh, three times a week for up to three years. So really, oh, yeah. for, to treat it like a Lyme disease. Yeah. Or, or, so or, I treated or MS. My, I treated myself for two and a half years. I was I was pretty much done. But I ramped up to. I did it quickly. I I did it probably faster than than you're supposed to. But I just wanted to get to that <laughs> get going. to that, that yeah. base. So I so you know I went from like two stings to three and four and five, and I was wow. up to ten at least ten, three times a week. I would do extra points like on my head, uh -huh. meridian points, uh, when you have shoulder issues or whatever else, like you're treating yeah, these, yeah. people have chronic things and yeah. you can treat that once you're once you're doing your spine. Because this the spine ones will resonate, they will go out to your whole body through, through those. This I've, is more central. Obviously. This is like targeted to yeah. this area. Yeah. I've heard that, that the bee venom will actually travel through the yes. body and go to where yeah. it needs to do the work. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. So in the, in the lab, they've killed MRSA with it. They've killed HIV they've, in the labs when they affect the bee venom. But the other products like propolis, propolis, right. propolis is a sticky resin that they get from trees and stuff. And there's uh -huh. different varieties of it and they collect it and it's like super glue. It's, yes. it's a waxy. Uh, uh, residue and they build it all in their hives and they seal up little cracks with it and wow. like if you open up a, a beehive most of the time you have to like crack it open is because there's there's propolis in there uh -huh. they use it like glue it's it's and it's an amazing thing they they're using it in cancer research now despite hesitance my treatment for knee pain went well after three sessions I was back and running pain-free but that was my experience. FDA trials and studies have lately had a resurgence. Most of Europe and Asia have been using apotherapy for years. Studies have shown that apotherapy casts a wide net with treating chronic illness and injury. But could it help prevent certain illnesses, such as COVID-19? I wanted to better understand the human relationship with bees. So we met with one of California's top beekeepers. We're here with beekeeper Henry Balding. And uh, Henry, thanks for a lot for seeing us. I, I guess uh, I'm fascinated by beekeepers. How did you get into the beekeeping business? Well, when I was young, I was always interested in bees. Um, I would catch the bees off the rosemary bushes we have out in the Parkway at my mom's house <laughs> and from there we I met a beekeeper and then we had a bee swarm land in our yard and it went from there and I went big after that that's awesome that's awesome let me ask you you, you have a lot of bees how many how many uh, let me get rid of this guy how many uh, how many beehives do you have I probably have about 200 at the moment 200 beehives how many how many bees in each hive Say about 50,000. 50,000 bees? Yeah. So do you get stung often? I get stung probably five or six times a day. Five or six times a day. What about like illnesses or, or health-wise, I mean, especially in this COVID uh, era that we're in mm -hmm. right now? From my knowledge, no beekeeper in the United States has gotten COVID. No large-scale beekeeper that gets stung on a daily basis has contracted COVID. 
Isn't that um, incredible? There's something in the bee, bee venom that, that does good for that. Part of your product that you're supplying, apitherapists? We do sell little cages of 10 to 15 bees to people that use it to sting them, use the bees to sting themselves. And they're actually using it once they get trained, they're doing it for themselves. Right. So what can you tell me about the different bees that we have? We have the Africanized bees and then we have the local bees that, yeah, that we have, came from Europe? Yeah, we have the European honeybee, which are the bees that you're most likely going to see on your vegetable plants and flowering stuff in your, in your garden, yard. Yeah. and stuff, okay. Uh, the Africanized bees, you're going to see them more out in the wild when you're hiking or camping. They like living in rock crevices and in wall voids and stuff like that. And um, what is the difference between the two species or, 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 as far as behavior? Genetically, yeah. there's, they're honeybees, so there's nothing different genetically. They're just hyper-aggressive, the Africanized bees. Meeting with Henry gave us a better understanding of how we interact with bees. The fact that worldwide, Almost no beekeepers have contracted COVID tells me there's much more going on here than just treating chronic illness. But why? We'll try to answer that and other questions on the next Cure Seekers.